In this video, I'm going to answer a question we received on our Excel forum a little while ago, which was, how can I write a formula that lists the date for the first Monday in each month of this year? I'll also show you how to incorporate data validation so you can choose a different day. For example, maybe you're more interested in finding the first Saturday. I'll also show you how to modify the formula to list the last Monday in each month, or the last Thursday or Sunday, etc. We'll use the date function to generate the list of dates. Now I want the dates for this year and I need one date for each month. So I'm going to type in an array of values from one to 12. Now there is a quicker way of doing this and I'll show you later in the video. But for now, we're just going to type in the array of values one to 12. And then I want the dates for the seventh of each month. Now I need to use this formula again. So I'm just going to copy that, save me typing it out. The next part is to subtract the weekday number from the dates that are the first of each month minus one. So actually the last day of the previous month. And we want the weekday where Monday is zero and Sunday is six. So I'm going to tab to enter three, close parentheses. Now I have Office 365 with dynamic arrays, so I can simply press enter and the formula spills the results. If you have Excel 2019 or earlier, then you need to first select 12 cells, then enter your formula and control shift and enter. And that will enter the results into those 12 cells for you. So let's step through how the formula works by breaking it down into the separate components. I've color coded the formula here so you can relate to the individual components. So starting with the list of dates for the seventh of each month, we want the dates for 2020 for the month numbers one through 12 for the seventh of each month. Then we need to list the first of each month minus one. So I'm just going to paste in the formula, the first minus one and then enter. Then we need to find the weekday number for this date here. So weekday for this date, and we want three because that's going to give us where Monday is zero and Sunday is six. So close my parentheses. Now I need to copy this down. And lastly, all I need to do is take the first date minus this weekday number. Control enter to copy it down. And there I have my list of Monday dates. You can see each of the formula components down here. Now typing out an array of numbers one to 12 is too much work for my liking. So let's take a look at how we can simplify writing this formula. One option is to use the row function. So we still want 2020. Instead of typing out the month numbers, I just want to return a list of row numbers one to 12. That's going to give me my 12 numbers. And if I select the row formula, and press the F9 key, you can see it gives me that array. So I can control Z to undo. And then all I need is the seventh. And obviously I want to copy this date formula because we now need to subtract the weekday for the first minus one comma three for the weekday number and enter. So you can see the row function is just a bit quicker to type. Now, if you are using Excel 2019 or earlier, remember you'd have to select those 12 cells first and control shift and enter to enter this formula. Let's take a look at another option where we use the sequence function, which is available to Office 365 users. So sequence is one of the new dynamic array functions. So we want the year 2020 and for the month numbers, we want to use sequence of 12 it's going to give us the same array that we hard keyed. You can see if I press F9, it gives me the array. And then I just need the seventh of each month. We'll copy that minus the weekday for the same formula, but for the first minus one. And we want three for the return type. And we get the spilled results. Now, to be clear, the sequence function and this spilling functionality is only available in Office 365 where you have dynamic arrays. Okay, let's look at a way we can toggle through different options. Perhaps we want to see Tuesday's dates or Friday's dates. So let's take a look at how we can do that. If you want to generate a list of dates on the fly, then you can link 
the formula to a data validation list, and I've got one up here, that allows you to choose a different date. When you choose that date, the formula dynamically updates. So here I have a table for each day of the week, and this is the number of days that I need to subtract. So you can see the formula here references this cell. And this cell is looking up Friday in the list of dates here and returning the number to subtract. So as I choose a different day, the number here changes and my results alter dynamically. I've used the XLOOKUP function, as you can see, to look up this list and return the value to subtract. But you can equally use VLOOKUP if you're on earlier versions of Excel and don't have the new XLOOKUP function. Now we can also find the last Monday in each month by wrapping the date formulas in end of month. And you can see that up here, we're finding the last day of the month and zero will return the last day of the current month. So it's going to give us the last day for January, February, March through to December. And again, we use end of month in our weekday formula. Now the number of days to subtract shifts by one, as you can see in the table here, but otherwise the formulas are the same. So this is the last Wednesday in each month, the last Saturday, and so on. So there you have a few ways to generate a list of dates. Take a moment to download the Excel file for this lesson from the link here or in the video description. I hope you can make use of this technique. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more. And why not share it with your friends who might also find it useful. Thanks for watching.